We're here in the beautiful Santa Cruz Mountains on the first stop of the Above the Chaos Tour, working with to unite a whole network around the world of amazing co-creators and solutionaries. And want to just uh, stop and share a little bit about how we got here. When we look around in our world shaking, it's easy to feel overwhelmed by the total volume of crises. There's so many different problems that we can see in so many different domains of the world, whether we're looking at at the issues of chronic disease or chronic poverty or scarcity or the world war that's starting to break out into the open or whether we're looking at economic supply chains under, under attack, whether we're looking at the food price crisis, whether we're talking with farmers and producers who are concerned that that food price crisis could escalate into a food scarcity crisis. If we're looking at the, at the geopolitical division around the world or the socio-political division that's happening at home in our own communities, over the last few years it's become apparent that things are profoundly broken. One of the key things that we've been discussing over the last years if we've, as we've brought together hundreds of people around the world is this idea of whose responsibility is this to meet the challenges, solve the problems and accomplish the goals at hand in this moment in history. And one of the profound things that we've been trying to grapple with is what would that look like if there was no them out there that we were going to delegate responsibility to, but we decided that this was up to us, the people, to arise and unite as a force for good to meet this moment in history. I've been thinking about this for longer than most, I think since I was since waking consciousness as long as I can remember, but certainly in open conversations since 10 or 12. I profoundly understood that during my lifetime, the systems of the world would shake and that we would be caught up into something like an existential spiritual battle for the future of life and society. It's hard to know what to do with that, but God was kind enough to bring lots of prompts along the way, lots of influences into my life to help make sense of it. I spent most of my life building heavy civil infrastructure, just learning how to bring design intention into reality, how to order, organize people and companies to bring, to bridge from what is in any current domain of space time to the better and higher vision of what might be. Through that process, maybe seven years ago, as I was working on building projects, and then portfolios of projects, and then companies that could build projects, and starting to engage in joint ventures to do things that were larger than any one company could do in isolation. About seven years ago, we started to talk about the notion of worksite Earth, not as some impossibly large challenge, but as a single finite domain to be challenged with totally transformed, regenerated, renewed within a single generation. So we started trying to gather minds who could think at those levels of abstraction and who, who were lucky enough to have the life experiences and the testing of building things around the world and unfolding solutions. Through that time, we started to conceptualize, okay, could, could we get our arms around any kind of a strategy, any kind of a vision, any kind of a plan that actually might work, that would be omni-considerate and take into account the absolute an unconditional love of the Creator for all creation without exception that wouldn't be started for any one tribe or nation, but for the total integrated well-being, development, and right relationship of all generations of life in all places and times. And that became really the guiding mission. When we stepped back and were working on how we could possibly approach this, we started to think like builders. And on building projects, you have your design intention, you create work breakdown structures of all the different parts, you do careful analysis of all the existing forces and con conditions, and you can't leave anything out. Every aspect of the existing condition has to be accounted for, and every aspect of the de design intention has to be accounted for. And then you have to have a pragmatic and executable strategy and plan that links together sometimes tens or hundreds of thousands of discrete activities into interconnected webs of relationship that are actually measurable week by week as you work together in community to pull the higher vision down into reality. As we conceptualized that really early on, we realized one of the biggest issues was going to be legal and governance structures. 
We realized that we would have to immediately start moving billions of dollars of funds around the world, that there was all sorts of challenges with nation states, and that if we started something too centralized, something that anybody owned, something that existed within any existing domain of space-time, that it would be overly centralized and could just be attacked and killed. So we started to think about what it would take to develop a whole new paradigm of legal and governance and commonsing where we could gather up our collective inheritance of the wisdom, principles, values, solutions that cause people, societies, ecosystems, communities to flourish in harmony and then start to bring that into reality. It took, it took having an attorney on staff full time for three or four years, talking with dozens of advisors, looking at experiments around the world. One of the great ones that we did was we, we took two different week long trips with one of the leading professors in the United States who's been studying the Mondragon experiment for the last 40 or 50 years and teaching people about it. We took week, two week long trips over to Spain to immerse ourselves in what is one of the biggest and most successful alternative models of economic cooperative socio-economy. Through that process, we got to talk with some of the deep wisdom holders that have been there from the start and who hold the keys to that, and also some of the executives who've been trying to propagate those models around the world, sometimes, unfortunately, unsuccessfully. Through that process over the course of three or four years, we started to come up with the shared understanding of something like a pattern language that would incorporate the best of the principles and values and things that have worked in these successful and proven experiments that have grown out to be some of the most powerful economic forces in the world. And how we could actually repackage those up into something that any community, any bioregion around the world would be able to implement for themselves. As we started articulating that, we realized we would need to actually instantiate the real pragmatic legal and governance infrastructure in different nations around the world. And we started with the first creation in the United States. That let us then fund the, the construction, the design and the build of the backbone infrastructure and technology to connect up and empower the amazing heroes that are on the front lines of every struggle around the world. One of the really clear spiritual visions that came through was the idea that we're called to be one spiritual body, all manifest creation flowing from one creative source in all of its manifest diversity, each with a specific, beautiful, unique purpose and place and context and role to play in the transformation and regeneration of our world. The vision I had was looking over this sea of body parts scattered across the world and, and realizing that all the parts were there, everything was present, everything was accounted for, but in isolation, we were all struggling. In isolation, we were all under-resourced. In isolation, none of us has the total set of relationships and capacity and competence, networks, everything required to actually deal with the root cause of the meta-crisis that we find ourselves caught up into. Let me try to explain a little bit how I've come to think about this meta-crisis. All the little things we can identify that are wrong, that could be better, the profound injustices, the conflicts unfurling around the world, the conflicts that rocked us even in our own living rooms and our own families over the last years. There's a question we could ask that might be something like, if the fact that some of our families can't even talk to one another much less, you know, the deepest members of both sides of our political divides. If that wasn't the real problem, what might the deeper issue be? In construction, we have tools we've developed when people get hurt or when there's accidents, and one of those is called root cause analysis. So often when something goes wrong, when something's unfolding, when people are getting injured, you can look at approximate cause, but it takes a whole community of people coming together and going, What's deeper? What's deeper? Why? Yes, people got hurt. Yes, there was this immediate explanation for that. But what's actually going on here? What are the deeper issues that are unfurling that are allowing this to manifest? And so over time, you get an intuition for how to just keep going deeper into the problems and challenges and keep looking deeper for the root cause. When we look at 
all the things going on, the pollutions of our ocean, the pollution of our oceans, the, the fact that now rainwater samples taken in the most remote regions of the world are showing levels of toxicity in the pure rainwater at levels higher than the US government allows their own citizens to drink in municipal water systems. What's going on that, that's causing this whole array of issues, the collapse of social systems, the collapse of culture, the collapse of value, the collapse of food systems, the collapse of geopolitical stability. All of it comes down fundamentally to our way of being together as a human species on planet Earth. So when we started to conceptualize what might be a possible way to sort it out, we realized that none of the work we could ever do to treat these symptoms could ever cause the root issue to be resolved. And that the only thing that could cause the root issue to be resolved is a fundamental transformation and realignment of our way of being together and relating to one another as a human species on planet Earth not as separate or distinct from this beautiful natural environment, but as living constituents within the one body of creation. And how can we conceptualize how we can transform our role, not as a competitive, mutually exploitative human species at war with one another in the living system that we're a part of, but as a cooperative, flourishing, thriving, rightly related species bringing about an ever more abundant world for all its current and future inhabitants. So that's really the mission that this is all about. How do we go from our isolation, from our separation, and arise, wake up, arise and unite as one unified force for good? And from that unity, everything else becomes possible. I remember there was a time when we were in one of our early conferences and one of the wise elders asked a really interesting question. He said, we're looking at all these issues and we're struggling and we're kind of stuck in the weeds. What's the one thing that everyone thinks is impossible, but if it could be accomplished, all the other things would start rapidly falling in place. And we all sat with that question for a while. And what came back resoundingly was this issue of unity. And that's the fundamental drive, it's the fundamental drive of the spiritual element in the world. It's the drive, the impulse, the, the impelling of all creation back towards unity through love. So that's really what this is all about. And it's the only solution that can do it. We can, we can deal with the symptoms, but if we come together in a spirit of love, we place as our highest overarching and uniting intention, what's beyond the most perfect thing we can conceptualize, the creator's intent for this beautiful, flourishing world. And we commit that we will stop at nothing short but the total integrated development, well-being, and right relationship of all generations of life. And we commit together that we're gonna do that now, in this window, before it's too late. Right now, for the first time in human history, it is absolutely possible for every single person on earth to have an existence at a higher standard of living than almost anyone in history has ever enjoyed. But it's gonna take some radical reorganization. Right now, all of our high science and technology is being weaponized against one another in earth as fast as possible. In the last century or so, we killed over 100 million of our children through warfare alone, using weapons that make today's the, the weapons we have today make those weapons look like little ch child's toys. Now with AI, that's orders of magnitude more powerful than even the most powerful nuclear weapons, we could rapidly tear down and destroy the society that we've so carefully created. But during this window, it's also possible for us to refashion those weapons into tools of life and liberty and abundance and co-create a flourishing and abundant world beyond all we could ask or imagine. So we look forward to this journey. Each and every one of us has such a critical role to play in each and every bioregion of the world. You'll see in some of the other films that are unfolding, 
that we're going around and we're curating together the very best solutions and technologies from around the world to connect up and empower the force for good citizens of goodwill around the world and the basic design calls for us to to implement those solutions around the world bioregionally or in watersheds around total sovereignty self-determination self-governance but we can't do it alone we can't have 10,000 bioregions or 10,000 localities around the world constantly trying to reinvent the wheel and solve problems if we're going to actually get humanity safely onto a better trajectory for, towards the best possible future, we're gonna to have to work together. So what we're doing, and you'll see this as it unfolds, is we'll pull all of these solutions and technologies and answers up into a new commons that nobody owns, but that we steward in common for the good of all current and future generations. Once that working prototype is live with, with the basic generalized solutions to all the problems and challenges that, and needs we're facing, our audacious goal is to connect and empower 3% of the world's population as rapidly as we can, roughly 250 million competent, capable, mission and values driven leaders, capable of organizing small teams and changing the world around them. We'll have full programs of coaching and mentoring, infrastructure, shared services, support, so that all of those leaders in their own times, their own places, their own bioregions, have all that they need to serve and empower their local communities to realize the best possible future that they can dream of. So we look forward to going on this journey together. Time's really critical, and we have to come to this realization that there's no them out there coming to save us. We know what the Spirit's impelling us to do. As I travel around the world, we're all starting to speak the same language. We're all starting to recognize this, this pattern, but we can only do it together. So I'll look forward to seeing you as we continue on the road.